What is going on, Live Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about the top five fat loss mistakes. I'm going to touch on mistakes that are normally the derailment of your entire process. These five things you must and should avoid. Let's go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Quickly before we start, this video is brought to you by yours truly, Fledge Fitness and the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, what are you waiting for? With an ergonomic design, aluminum handle, and swivel design, you can't go wrong with the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. Only $16.50. You can click on the top right-hand corner of this video or down in the description box below. And of course, as always, guys, thank you so much for your support. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, we're going to jump into the first thing that uh, so many people just do this and I get a lot of messages on this specific thing is breaking your entire regimen, diet regimen, protocol, whatever you're doing, whatever type of weight loss path you're on, breaking the whole thing because of a cheat meal. Now, notice the wording that I use there. Not doing a cheat meal that breaks the whole thing. Breaking the whole thing because of a cheat meal. So many people get overwhelmed with guilt and feel like they just completely messed everything up because they had a cheat meal. Let me tell you this. You messed nothing up because you did the cheat meal. Did you not do what you were supposed to do that day? Absolutely, but you have to be psychologically a little bit more tougher than that or just more cognizant of what you've actually accomplished if you spent two weeks following a diet regimen to a t or two weeks following a protocol to a t and one day you have a cheat meal or you eat something that wasn't part of the process and you didn't measure your calories for that meal or whatever it is the thing that threw you off it's highly processed foods whatever it was that's one day against two weeks. And the crazy thing is that most people in these situations go and immediately check the scale as if this is accurate information that they're about to receive. Newsflash, if you're eating a highly processed, most likely high in carbohydrates, which means that it's most likely high in glucose, which means that you will have some glycogen in your system, you're going to have water retention, glycogen buildup, and the food that you've eaten all providing weight to that scale. And that scale is going to throw you off. And then it's going to make you think that everything you work for is for nothing. Because look, this cheat meal made me gain three pounds and I've only lost three pounds in the last two weeks. You may have actually lost legitimate body fat in the last three weeks and now you just put on a little bit of water weight, a little bit of glycogen buildup that can literally come off of your body overnight. You've used that information to trick you to believe that the three pounds of fat that you've burned was obsolete. One cheat meal isn't gonna do anything Two cheat meals isn't gonna do anything. Bounce right back on. Don't let that psychologically throw you off. And please, don't check the scale after you eat any type of cheat meal because it's just too one dimensional. That number is not going to be representative of your progress. Now let's move on to number two. Now here's where it becomes kinda devil's advocate-ish, I guess. Too many cheat meals. Now, some people feel like, hey, listen, it's, it's one extreme versus the other. It's like, I had this one and now I don't know what to do. And other people are like, bro, I could do so many cheat meals, it doesn't even matter. I'm cheat meal here. I do Monday, I do my regimen. Tuesday, I do a cheat meal. Wednesday, I do my regimen. Thursday, I do a cheat meal. Friday, I do my regimen. And then Saturday and Sunday, I do a cheat meal. That's not going to work for you. You're going to never kind of get yourself into a good rhythm hormonally as well. Not just, uh, you know, in terms of what you're eating, but your body is going to make it more difficult for you to stick to any type of regimen because 
Gredlin is going to continue to increase. Highly palatable foods send out certain signals in your brain to want to eat more of it, regardless of the calories that you've consumed for the day. Leptin is going to decrease, which is a hormone that tells your body that you're full. It sends the signals to your brain that you're full when you're eating. When leptin decreases, that signal takes longer to reach your brain, so you end up overeating. There's so much stuff that can happen when you are just free nilly willy with your cheat meals it's not to say that not eat what you want eat what you want as long as it's controlled eat what you want yes make sure you get your nutrition and you understand how much calories you're consuming because that's going to determine your weight loss but if you're just like I, th this is my i don't care i don't measure and i eat everything i want or anything i want day and you have multiple of these days no you, that, you need to cut that out. It's not going to keep you, you're literally probably going to be stuck. You're going to be either taking one step forward and one step back, or worst case scenario, one step forward, two steps back. So all your hard work will, in this type of situation, be for nothing. You definitely don't wanna to do too many cheat meals. And number three, unlike having cheat meals or not having cheat meals, just taking the weekend off. You can do this. That's fine. You can take the weekend off. You can do Monday through Friday. You stick to it. The weekends is two days. Just give me two days, Edward, please. You can do that. But there is a possibility that you can overeat enough in those two days to negate the calories that you didn't consume Monday through Friday. So you have to be very careful. You have to look at your total weekly caloric intake, not just your daily. This is the thing that a lot of people don't kind of like, they don't really wrap their heads around. That calorie consumption is measured through the day, measured throughout the entire week, collectively measured throughout the entire month, collectively measured throughout the entire year, collectively. If you eat more than you're supposed to throughout the entire year, at the end of the year, you would have gained weight. So that means if you're at a net positive energy balance, so more calories in than you're excreting out or that you're burning, at the end of the year, you would gain weight. If you eat less than what your body needs, at the end of the year, you will lose weight. That's how it is. It's measured at all times, not just on a daily, systematic, one by one kind of way, and then the next day is just a restart, and you can bank all of your, uh, you know, all the calories that you didn't eat Monday through Friday. You can't do it like that. If you're eating a specific, if you're right on the cusp, if you're like 200 calories away from being at a caloric maintenance and every day, but then you go crazy and eat like. 3,000, 4,000 calories one day, 3,000 calories the next because you've been kind of suppressing yourself and just waiting for the weekend, you probably end up still at a caloric surplus. So if you don't bank these days in and get the calorie burn and you keep it. And then now the, the 2,000, that doesn't really matter because you'll go right back. You'll literally be either not moving or or moving backwards just the same way if you just had willy-nilly cheat days. So you can have the Saturday, Sunday off, but you still gotta be conscious of how much you're eating and make sure that overall on the week, you're at a caloric deficit. Number four is the one that is so annoying because so many people like to do this, is not working out. You don't have to go to the gym, I, I hear you. You don't have to go to the gym but you do have to work out. Apply some type of resistance training, either calisthenics or something, push-ups, give me something, and then cardio as well, because those two things are going to help you in the long run. A lot of the reasons why people can't reach their goals is because they hit this plateau, but the plateau is really only there because you let it be there. You need to do things to combat uh, metabolic adaptation, which means as you reduce weight, as you reduce your caloric intake, your metabolism will reduce as well. Your basal metabolic rate will reduce to compensate for that. Your body's efficient. Your body realizes, wait a second, he's not consuming as much energy as he uh, normally does. We're going to be as efficient as possible to try not to burn as much calories uh, the way we did before. So that <clears throat> that's called adaptive thermogenesis or metabolic adaptation. How do you combat that? Well, it is understood by science that the primary driver to drive your metabolic rate is lean mass. 
How do you combat reducing calories, reducing weight by increasing muscle tissue, thus increasing the thing that drives your metabolic rate, your lean mass. Build muscle while reducing fat at the same time, that's going to actually help you reduce fat much faster and break through any type of plateaus that you may encounter. And cardio helps you because you get an epoch effect, which means not only do you burn the calories that you're burning during your cardio session, if it's around 30 minutes or more and it has a moderate intensity to it, you actually can carry over an additional afterburn effect of almost 36 hours. So you're adding more calorie burning by doing nothing after your cardio simply because you've elevated your entire your body's trying to get back to rest but it was so elevated throughout that entire workout that it may actually take 36 hours to get back into that full rest mode guess what here's the trick never let it if you have 36 hours try to get another workout in and keep yourself constantly hooked on to that 36 hour afterburn effect you do these things, you don't got to worry about plateaus. Trust me. And number five is poor food choices. That, that's basically not eating things that are satiating um, because if you don't do that, you're going to want to eat more. And remember, it's not just about the robotic element of here's how many calories I need to eat. This is what I will be eating and now I sleep. It, it, you can't do it like that. We're humans. If we feel that we're not full, there's only so much of that we can take before we break. You know, we could probably do it for a month, then we're going to break. Eat things that are satiating. Protein, uh, steaks, things that are high in protein tend to be more satiating. So you want to get your protein in and they help you build muscle as well. But also foods that have fiber in it because it helps with your digestion and it also helps make you feel full also don't negate foods that are very low in calories but very filling things like air pop popcorn believe it or not is a really good superfood high in fiber low in calories but super filling that's one of the things that you could add to your repertoire those are the five things guys if you don't do these five things it, it literally you could reach your goals like just avoid those five things and you could reach your fat loss goals those are probably the top five fat loss mistakes that i see people do uh, when they are trying to lose weight hopefully this video has helped you guys and of course as always i want to thank my patrons for my patreon i'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here